Welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast, where we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage everyone to learn more. We work to equip believers to share their faith with everyone they know. Welcome to the Tending Our Nets podcast. My name is Joshua Sherman, and I am your host here. Last time, we started a new series, pivoting from the big picture gospel, and we've been looking at the gospel of the victory of God, of the kingship of Jesus. We looked last time at the Old Testament context, or some of the Old Testament context, and now we're going to pivot to some of the Second Temple context. Uh, This is context after the Old Testament was finished uh, and before the destruction of the Second Temple in AD 70. One of the things that we see is that Alexander the Great spread his own gospel. This actually was an amazing thing because God used Alexander the Great, who, you know, if we look at the prophecies of Daniel, was one of his empire was one of the four beasts that would come through that area. Alexander the Great came through and he spread. Hellenism, and he spread the Greek language and the Greek culture. This was part of the good news that he pronounced, the euangelion, which is precisely the same word that we see used in the New Testament when we talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ. What was Alexander the Great's good news? He was announcing the good news of Greek culture. The good news that not only was there peace and security, because he could provide that, but there would now be the widespread availability of education, the widespread availability of healthcare, the widespread availability of entertainment, the widespread availability of athletics. And I want to ask. How familiar does this sound? How much of this describes what we see and what we value in our society today? How often do we hear the good news that we have these things proclaimed? I would say we hear it multiple times a day. We have football. We have this latest uh, artist, musical artist, the latest TV show the latest development in fighting disease, the latest in science, the latest in education, the latest in technology. These, you might say, are the gospel of our culture today. Not so very different, then, from the gospel of Alexander the Great and spreading Hellenism around the Mediterranean. Take a moment to reflect. We can think, you know, how has the coronavirus impacted these points of good news in our culture? It's changed the way that most countries go about doing things in their day-to-day just about everywhere. It's changed how we do education. It's had impacts on our healthcare systems. It's had impacts on the production of entertainment and athletics. We see that all throughout. One of the things I want us to realize as we look at this particular piece of context for what it actually means when the good news is proclaimed is that there was competition in the first century world. There were multiple gospels being proclaimed in the first century world. It wasn't just something that we see in the Bible. This was something that we saw from kings, from Caesars, and generals. One of the things I hope we can notice as we look forward is just how much Alexander the Great, one of the beasts, one of the dynasties of Daniel, himself 
far from a godly man doing godly things, actually prepared the way for the explosion of the gospel in the first century Roman Empire. You see, before Alexander the Great, what you had in Israel, in Judah, was a small contingent of people descended from Israel that had scriptures that were written in a language almost nobody else understood. In fact, very few of them could actually read it in Hebrew. This group of people spoke a language that wasn't very common in much of the Roman Empire, or what would become the Roman Empire at that time. They spoke Aramaic, which is a cousin of Hebrew that they picked up while in Babylonian captivity. How are you supposed to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ when your scriptures are written in a language no one understands? When you speak a language that most of the known world doesn't understand. Enter Alexander the Great, spreading Hellenism, his gospel, and the Greek language around the Mediterranean. By doing this, he prepared the way for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, once he did that, and once we have from the Ptolemaics, the translation of the Hebrew scriptures into Greek. Now the foundation has been laid for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed to the known world, to the Roman Empire, in the first century, in a language that everybody understood. That is really cool. And it also adds to our context for the gospel, because we recognize there wasn't just one gospel. There was a world of gospels out there, and people needed to choose which good news they were going to put their trust in. Next time, we'll get into more specific New Testament context, and we'll continue to explore what it means when we say that the gospel is about the victory of God. The gospel is about Jesus ascending to the throne as king over all. Thanks for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, write reviews, share this with your friends so we can get the word out and help equip Christians to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone they know. God bless. You've been listening to the Tending Our Nets podcast. If you like what you hear, check us out at the Raven Creek Social Club and by searching for us on social media via Tending Our Nets. Who raise us up to bear your